Sister David Perry, coordinator of the Ames Children's Ministry. Sister Taylor Folks is coming. And then immediately after she comes and introduce our children, we will have music ministry by the My Convention Youth Choir in that order. Come on, let's praise God for them. Good morning, music and you. Can I get to make some noise? Well, the children are here and they're ready to sing for you. But today we want to give honor and reference to our presiding bishop of the Churches of God in Christ, Bishop Blake. We want to give a reference to the first and second assistant, Bishop Brooks and Bishop Macklin. We want to give reference to the chairman of AIM, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, and also our general supervisor, Mother Rivers. We also want to give honor to the international youth president, Superintendent Linwood Dillard, to our chair lady, Evangelist Joyce Rogers, and all of the vice presidents. We also want to give honor to the International Music Department President, President Dr. Judith McAllister, God bless you. And also all of the Vice Presidents, Evangelist Kim Burrell, Evangelist Barbara Sago, Elder Edgar Madison, and Minister Ricky Payton. Well, we have two selections for you. The kids are gonna sing. The first selection is called, I'm Excited. And the second selection is called King of Glory. So why don't you come and clap your hands and stand up and enjoy the children with us. On today, we want to honor our presidents and our chair lady with a, a t-shirt. Superintendent Dillard. And to our chair lady. So come on and clap your hands with all of the children. Enjoy them. They worked hard. And God, thank you and God bless you.
what he's done for me. Has he done something for you? That makes me excited.
Come on, let's give him a hand. Come on, let's pray to God for our children. Thank you, Helen David Perry, for your gifts. One of the children lost their badge, so we're going to ask you to come. I also have a cellular phone up here also. If you can identify it, please come and get it. Come on, let's praise God for our children. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let us say amen for the My Convention Youth Choir. As they come and bless us with music ministry.
goodness and your mercy toward us. Won't you help us sing it? Come on. Oh, yeah. Goodness and your mercy toward us. Come on, choir, sing it again. Come on. and sisters since the year of 1983 it has been indeed a pleasure and a privilege to share in the music ministry of the Church of God in Christ I had the opportunity to share under the late Dr. Matty Moss Clark Dr. Lavonia Whitley Dr. Iris Stevenson and it is certainly an honor to share under the great leadership of Dr. Judith McAllister <laughs> I want to personally thank Dr. Judith McAllister for this opportunity to share in this momentous occasion on this day in the Mayan Convention and the International Music Department service on today. My brothers and sisters on today, Dr. Ricky Payton is unable to be with us due to family illness, but we're certainly praying for him. He is one of the vice presidents of the International Music Department. But in place of him today, there is a young lady that is absolutely most capable to introduce and to present to us officially our international music president. She is a outstanding singer. Her voice is absolutely unique, yes. very distinct. She's anointed. I enjoyed her ministry on last night. God can do anything. She's a great pastor in the city of Houston, Texas, and serves as one of the vice presidents of the International Music Department. Let us receive none other than evangelist and vice president Kim Burrell from Houston, Texas. Let us receive her with a hearty amen. Thank you so much. It gives me great honor, and I'm extremely humbled to be able to present to you a woman of God, somebody that for the next few moments you can trust is speaking from the heart of God. Her three lovely children know her as mom. Her husband knows her as a loving and faithful wife. And we, the music department, know her as a diligent, saved, humble, sincere, professional, anointed woman of God who is serious about God and who is serious about this church. Will you please stand all over this place prayerfully, lovingly, respectfully. Will you clap your hands and receive President Judith Christy McAllister. Come on.
God bless you. You may go to your seats. Certainly it is an honor and a privilege for me to stand here once again in this place that we have hallowed as the house of God for this season and this time. To our presiding bishop, Bishop Charles E. Blake, in his absence, first and second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop P.A. Brooks and Bishop J.W. Macklin, to the general board, chairman of AIM, the superintendent, I'm sorry, the bishop, J. Drew Sheard. I would certainly love to honor again our sainted mother, Mother Willie Mae Rivers. We celebrate God for you. Thank you for being here today. I am honored and humbled by your presence and to her staff, and to one of my spiritual mentors, the supervisor of women for the Southern California First Jurisdiction, Los Angeles, California, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. Honor God for you today, woman of God. To my pastor in Nashville, Tennessee, the New Covenant Church of God in Christ, Bishop Felton Smith and my wonderful First Lady, I call her Pearl, Connie Smith, let's celebrate God for them today. They're here on today. Amen. I have some special friends that have come to join with me in this time of sharing. And I honor God for Minister Myron Williams that led us in worship on this morning. Amen. And Pastor Prashia Hilliard from right here in Houston, Texas. Stand, dear. Let them see you. Come on, stand up. Amen. We praise God for her today. She is the daughter of the wonderful man of God. You know him as Pastor I.V. Hilliard. We celebrate God for that family today. To Pastor Marvin Sapp, amen. God bless you. And certainly to my counterparts in this My Convention, the dynamic, visionary, gifted, and highly anointed president of the International Youth Department. Come on, let's praise God for Superintendent Linwood Dillard. I honor God for you today, man of God. Such a pleasure to work in tandem with you to accomplish kingdom agenda. And what could be said about the energetic, anointed, prophetic preaching machine? <laughs> the giant slayer, my sister, Chair Lady Joyce Rogers. Let's celebrate God for her. And certainly to the greatest department within the brotherhood, the international music department of the churches of God in Christ everywhere. Hallelujah. To my executive staff, to Vice President Barbara Jackson Sago in her absence, to the elder, one and only, Petey Madison, Jr. To Vice President Ricky Payton in his absence, and certainly to the incomparable Vice President Kim Burrell, we celebrate God for you today. As they have stated, Vice President Sago and Vice President Ricky Payton are just under a, an attack family, in a family way. Both of their mothers have been stricken, but we're believing God for total restoration. Can I get somebody to agree with me by saying amen? I thank God for Elder Ezra Howard, the orchestra. Have you enjoyed them? Amen. God bless you. Stand, sir. Stand, stand, stand. We celebrate God for you. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for him. And all those that work with him, too. Rochelle Robbins with the liturgical praisers, the liturgical dancers. I don't know if she's in the room, but we celebrate God for her and them. To Sister Delois Diggs and the Kojic Corral and Sister Sharon Jackson and Send You to First. Amen. T. Lynn Smith, the Quorum of Directors, each administrative assistant, regional, jurisdictional, district, local minister of music. I certainly honor God for you today. Let's celebrate them. Amen. To the Education Department, Sister Vitria Slack Ruffin. Are you in the room? 
Amen. Let's praise God for her. She assisted and really put together all of the curriculum for our AIM convention. We praise God for her. And to each participant in the IMD, each choir director, each worship leader, each member, to this fabulous youth choir, let's celebrate God for them. Amen. You all have done a wonderful job in this convention. We celebrate God for you. And to the pastor, Daniels, we honor God for you. Amen. He's on the organ. He switched roles. We praise God for you and, the, and how you expedited the service on today. And to my family, in their absence, my husband and my three children, Mama loves you, God bless you, honey, who are home watching me on the internet. My love to them all. I want to say thank you for allowing me to be who I am. Thank you for your tremendous support and your love. And to all of you, the people of God, we thank God for each and every one of you. Now on the count of three, this is what I want you to do. I want you to call your name. You ready? One, two, three. Okay, now you can say your name has been called in the AIM convention. Praise the Lord. To all of you on the stage, I have a special gift for you to remind you of this time of sharing today. All of you on the, on the podium, leaders, choir, I have a special gift for you today because we're going to be talking about something that I believe that all of us are dealing with. And I would like to remind you today that you are victorious, each and every one of you, each and every one of you. And I want to present you with a single from my forthcoming album, Sound the Trumpet. Amen? And as Minister Briggs has said, it's going to drop on August 23rd. I want you to say, buy it, don't burn it. Okay, that's for all of us. Buy it, don't burn it. Amen? Amen. Amen. The title track, these are the words, and I want you to hear these words. It says, there's a call to the body of Christ for righteousness, true holiness. There's a sound in the spirit we can't ignore. It's a sound of a shifting to new dimensions in the spirit. Portals opened and this glory raining down. Refining fire of God, come purge, clean, and make us whole. Holy Spirit, come on us now. Fill our empty souls so we can sound the trumpet, sound the alarm. Put on your armor, we're in a war. Sound the trumpet, Zion, put on your strength. Forward into battle with a praise on your lips. From the heart of the Father, I hear a longing, a yearning for the saints to raise the standard high. For the world is waiting to hear a distinction, a difference between what we are and what we're supposed to be. Oh, how can they know if they cannot hear? And how can they hear if our sound is unclear. We've got to sound the trumpet, sound the alarm, put on your armor. We're in a war, sound the trumpet. Zion, put on your strength, forward into battle with a praise on your lips. I want you to put your hands together and say, I'm gonna sound the trumpet. Take that as my gift to you for all of your love, and all of your support, I honor God for each and every one of you. And before I go into the word of God this morning or this afternoon, we have one of God's best. To prepare our hearts for the word of God. Psalmist Betty Ransom Nelson. What could be said about this prolific voice that has been ministering in the industry of gospel music for over 50 years? Receive her now as she ministers the word of the Lord 
through song. God bless you, woman of God. Jesus, oh. 
everyone stand to your feet. Listen, I'm not going to be before you long, but before the few fleeting moments that I do have, we're going to bring a word from the Almighty God. I want you to reach over and touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor. Holy Spirit, breathe on us. The ruler of God be released in this room even now. Thank you for the wind of God in this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we stand awaiting your word, your instructions, your directives, and we say, speak, Lord. I can't hear you, saints. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, and we will obey. Speak, Lord, and we will obey. Speak, Lord, and we will obey. Thank you for this time, for this moment, for this point in eternity. Thank you that this day will be a prophetic marker for us to realize that we are walking towards your purpose. We thank you now that every assignment that the enemy has sent for this service is canceled now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you that as you arise, every enemy is scattered in Jesus' name. Now, Father, that neighbor that we touch, strengthen. We speak strength to them now. Begin to speak strength to your neighbor. Strength. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus and we thank you that at the end of this exercise <laughs> hallelujah to Jesus that you will be glorified and the enemy will be horrified because we have taken our place and now we drop those hands and we give you glory Psalm 47 and 1, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout to God with the voice of trial. And all these blessings we ask in the name of the risen Savior and soon coming King, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. You may go to your seats for a brief moment. Because God is going to shift some atmosphere in your life where you are today. You know, one of the things that I prayed, Elder Madison, the Lord woke me up at 3 o'clock this morning and literally changed my entire message was that the Lord would only allow those that could handle this word to be in this room. You see, I'm not moved by crowds. Jesus had 12 disciples. And he poured into those 12 disciples and those 12 disciples became world changers. I asked God to send those that had an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. 
So often we can get locked up in tradition that we miss the sure word of God. Even Jesus said, he said, there is something more powerful than my word. He said, by the traditions of men, you have made the word of God of none effect. So I pray for you this morning that you would hear what thus saith the Lord, thereby being equipped to go to the next place in God. Would you put your hands together and bless God that you have an ear. Oh, y'all not blessing him. Come on, bless him. Stand on your feet one more time. This is for the reading of the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse number 5. If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? Romans chapter 8. And verse number 18. For I reckon. That the sufferings. Of this present time. Are not worthy to be compared. With the glory. Somebody said the glory. That shall be. Revealed in us. I want you to put your hand on your belly and say, The glory is going to be revealed in me. Now come on, look prophetically at your neighbor and say, The glory is going to be revealed in you. Now come on and put those hands together and give God praise as you go to your seat. Please consider with me for a few moments this afternoon this is war postured for his glory come on repeat that say this is war but I'm postured for his glory. This afternoon, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the norm, the art of delivering the word of God and obey the Lord by allowing you to come into a very intimate area of my life. I went to school. I know how to put all the pieces together for a sermon, but I told you the Lord woke me up early this morning. And he began to deal with me about some things that we are all going through. And he said, I want you to take your life and make it an example so that others will be able to really understand what's going on in their life. 
In the year of 2007, Mother Lewis, the Lord began to deal with me very intensely on warfare. And all which was about to take place in my life as a result of the spiritual territory I was about to walk in. He began to teach me through the word of God how to remain focused and to trust him no matter what. It was during this year that I really began to delve into, dig into the word of God and extrapolate those nuggets needed to walk into this new dimension. During this season of preparation and aloneness, he began to show me why he removed me from my comfort zone of Los Angeles, California and transported me to Nashville, Tennessee where I was alone. Somebody say alone. It was for preparation, but not in the context that I imagined, President Dillard. He was preparing me for war. For the next 12 months, I underwent intense, strategic, unrelenting, persistent, and consistent warfare in my mind. It was then that I came to understand that in order to stay free from the enemy's oppression, I had to wage war on the attacks that came against his word that was already spoken over my life. That I had to combat the lies of the enemy with the word of God. He taught me that amid the difficulties I may be facing, I was to keep praising him in the midst of the desert. When it seemed as if there was no life in my spirit due to the consistent badgering of the enemy, in spite of the lies he would tell, the lies of your life is not worth anything. I'm speaking to somebody in this room. Go ahead and kill yourself. You won't even be missed. Your ministry is over. Come on, somebody. I'm helping somebody right now. It was then that I had to keep my eyes focused on him. Focused on purpose. Focused on destiny. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you got to focus on destiny destiny. He taught me that I must not allow my context to define my content. That everything that was going on around me contextually was not to define my content on the inside. And you know, sometimes when we're going through that badgering season, and everyone has them, we look at what we don't have and we think that God has forgotten all about us. But he said that he has given us the weapons of war that are effective in gaining the victory. But he said, Judy, You've got to do the work. It's available to me, but I must make it 
happen. Let me give you a little analogy. I shared this with the chair ladies on the other day, but this would help us to understand that it's available to us, but we've got to make it work. Let's look at a vending machine. In a vending machine are all of the things sometimes we should need. But you know when you want a little snack, you go to the vending machine. You approach the vending machine and you see all of the cookies and the cakes and the chips and the Snickers bars, hint, hint. But just because you approach the vending machine does not mean you're going to receive that which you want. The first step is you've got to deposit your money. Somebody say you got to deposit something in this thing. Now just because you have deposited in the vending machine, do you have what you want? You've got to take it another further. You've got to press E5. And then it begins to roll down and it hits the place where you can go in and access it. But just because you hit E5, does that mean that you have what you want? After you have hit E5 and it has fallen into the dispensary, you've got to reach in and get what you've been desiring. Oh, it's the same thing in the spirit, Zion. God has made available to us everything that we could ever need. But we have got to reach in and grab it. And since the dispensary of heaven is in this room right now, I want you by your faith to reach up 